What is happening to Slipknot? Do I still like their music? Am I still a fan? We'll get to all that in just a bit. What's up everybody, I'm Anthony Sparsan. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me here on my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. Um, did some changes around here. That's right, your boy is back. I'm back on YouTube, baby! I'm back. I just dropped a video explaining what's going on, why it's been so long since I've been here on YouTube, why I'm returning to the channel, and um, why this place looks so different from the last time you guys saw my studio. We're gonna be experimenting here on my YouTube channel, and we're starting with this. Am I still a fan of Slipknot? In this video, I'm just gonna talk about some of the issues that have been happening with Slipknot over the last few years, specifically this year, and why after 20 years, I don't know if I'm still a Slipknot fan. Oh my God, no! Now I'm not making this video to bash the band. I'm making this video to just address some of the band's problems recently and why some of those issues have bled into my love of the band. With all the controversy surrounding the band's lackluster seventh release, the end so far, Corey Taylor's obvious precedence in his solo project, and the recent booting of their drummer of 10 years in Jay Weinberg, it's, uh, it's a little bit difficult to be a Slipknot fan right now. I'm not gonna lie. Now, I discovered Slipknot in 2003 during my freshman year in high school thanks to my boy, Rudy Gomez. Shout out, Rudy. Uh, I also do a podcast with him called Metaology. Shameless plug. Check it out. That day, he brought his Walkman CD player and showed me this new band that just dropped their second album, and he said it was like the heaviest thing ever. Showed me Iowa, and I was hooked from that point on. It was the first time I ever heard like double kick, blast beats, just black metal, death metal stuff happening in the realm of new metal and it kind of created its own genre and i love that so much iowa is still in my opinion the greatest metal record ever made you can hear the adrenaline pumping through joey's veins as he massacres his drum skins you can hear the wrath in Corey taylor's voice as he proclaims people equal shit and the riffs are amazing seamlessly moving from a new metal groove to black metal blast beats and death metal chugging iowa has it all from then on i was obsessed with the knot Fast forward about 20 years, and I've been to several Slipknot live shows. I own a bunch of Slipknot merch, including a lot of shirts. Uh, even my son's name is Corey. Not saying he's named after Corey Taylor, I'm just saying his name is Corey. But although my love of their first three albums is everlasting since All Hope Is Gone was released, I've had a love-hate relationship with the band. All Hope Is Gone has several bangers, but overall, I would say it's Stone Sour 2.0. And honestly, I think most of the maggots would agree with me. The Great Chapters was a good step in the right direction and had Custer, which is still in my gym playlist and it's still a song I love to bang out to. Overall, The Great Chapter was an all right record. We Are Not Your Kind is my favorite record that Slipknot has released in their post All Hope Is Gone era. Really, it's my favorite record that Jay Weinberg's been on, but I still had some issues with it. And the end so far, I mean, come on. I just feel that the overall content quality of Slipknot has been on a decline since Paul Gray's death and the band's never really recovered since. Paul Gray was such a huge part in the band's sound and their songwriting process. He was one of the core Slipknot songwriters. We should also discuss Corey Taylor, who, in my opinion, is the greatest frontman of our generation. His lyricism, vocal style, onstage presence, and personal vibe just resonates with this audience. But I think that there's valid speculation to make that he may have been growing out of the Slipknot bubble for years. I'm a fan of the first few Stone Sour records, I'll admit it myself, I love those first five Stone Sour records. And you could tell he was able to stretch his wings as far as being a vocalist, being a guitarist, and being a songwriter. Even though I personally am not a fan of his solo work, I can admit that his audience and that demographic is growing, and he is extremely passionate about that project. In saying that, you rarely see him post about Slipknot anymore on Instagram. You don't see his enthusiasm anymore live for the band, and he's probably lost a lot of that enthusiasm in regards to the writing process of the band. You could obviously tell the end so far was not his best work in the band. And with that, we address the elephant in the room, why you guys are all here, the recent booting of drummer of 10 years, Jay Weinberg. For those that don't know, Jay is the son of Max Weinberg, who is the legendary drummer for Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. He joined Slipknot in 2014 to replace the legendary Joey Jordison. Imagine the shoes he had to fill. Imagine the pressure. Imagine the balls it took to say, I can do that and follow one of the greatest metal drummers of all time. Not only did Jay walk into an impossible situation, he excelled and became a beloved figure amongst the maggot community. He could blend his drumming style perfectly with the older Joey era songs. But whereas Joey was looser and more dynamic, Jay brought a solid foot to the floor playing style to the band's newer music. You can hear his precision on songs like The Negative One and All Out Life. I mean, for real, Jay was just a fan who used to watch the band from the side of the stage and became a part of the circus. I mean, 
How can you not relate to that? How can that not be a dream come true? And how can maggots not love that? I mean, I know it's not Jay's fault, but really the quality of the band's content during the Jay Weinberg era has not been their best. And honestly, that's more to blame with the core songwriters of the band, not Jay. Honestly speaking, the Jay Weinberg era has not produced many great albums from the band, as we know of like a self-titled Iowa Volume 3. And some could argue All Hope is Gone, but since then we haven't had great releases from the band. We've had great songs and great singles, but releases, that's not Jay Weinberg's fault. That's definitely the fault of the core songwriters of the band, be it Corey Taylor, Mick Thompson, Jim Root, even Clown. So with the quality of the band's content declining over the years and Corey Taylor kind of having one foot in, one foot out with the band makes it a little harder for me as a fan to want to invest my time and money into the Slipknot brand. And then you add in the fact that one of my favorite drummers of the modern era and um, favorite member of mine, really, in Jay Weinberg has been booted from the band. So am I still a Slipknot fan? Honest answer? No. No! But hold on! Whoa, 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 whoa! Wait! That's okay. How many times have you fallen off from loving a band? How many times have your favorite band let you down and you're just like, you know what, I'm kind of over it. This is more of a, you know what, I'm kind of done with this. I have my favorite albums from Slipknot. I have my favorite songs from Slipknot. I can listen to those whenever I want. I have my favorite music videos. I love watching the band's Conan O'Brien performances. And honestly, I love to watch Jane Weinberg's solo drum cams. I guess it's all just to say, I have my fill. I have enough. I can go back and watch any of the videos whenever I want. I can go back and watch any of my favorite live performances when I want. I can go back and listen to any other music anytime I want. But do I want to sit around and get my hopes up every time I see news dropping about Slipknot, new Slipknot song coming out on Friday? No. How about new? I'm not a fan of the band's promotional tactics even at this point. I don't appreciate the Adderall was just an EP, remix, EP thing, whatever you want to call it. And it got a lot of fans' hopes up. Last album sucked. I'll just say it. I didn't enjoy it. But my ears are going to be open for future music. I'm just not going to be excited about it anymore. And that's okay. I think it's okay for fans to be like, you know what? I'm off the boat. I'm... I'm good. I wish the band the best, and I really hope to come back around as a fan. It's not a situation where I hate the band and I'm going to burn all their records. Next time they come through town, I've already seen them live. I don't need to hear half a set from a bunch of albums that I don't like anymore. If I want to see Slipknot live, I have Disaster Pieces on DVD. I can go through that on right now. I mean, honestly, I'm a Jay Weinberg fan now. I'm more excited about what he's going to do in future projects, and we'll probably follow him there, as opposed to being excited about what Slipknot's going to do next. Hey, listen up, guys. I really appreciate you guys hanging out for this uh, video. This topic's kind of new. It came up out of nowhere, and uh, thank God, because I was trying to figure out what kind of content to put out. Let me know if you guys like this video, this uh, opinionated slash video essay, IRL video, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. I'm, I'm going to be experimenting more with some of my videos. Not all my stuff's going to be guitar related. And I'm really excited to be back here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Leave a thumbs up on this video. Comment below. Let me know what you thought. What's your opinion on Slipknot? Are you still a fan? And I will catch you guys on the next one. Stay heavy, guys.